In this video, we are going to cover four foundational principles of image composition, as well as the one key secret that will take your images to the next level. Hey y'all, I'm Drake and this is Drake Makes Art. So this video is the first in a series on the fundamentals of the visual arts, covering topics like composition, color theory, and other tools that you can put in your artist toolbox to help you craft effective images. Today, we're going to be talking about composition, which is a technical term for how you arrange the elements of an image to lead your viewer's eye. And we're going to go over four foundational principles that you can use as tools to guide you when you're composing an image. Let's get started. Subject placement. So when you sit down to compose an image, obviously you're going to have something you're trying to represent. You know, the thing you're trying to take a picture of, or paint a painting of, or shoot a video of. And we call that something the subject. The first thing any artist has to decide when they set out to compose an image is, where do I want to put the subject? Over the hundreds of years that humans have been creating visual art, we figured out that there are certain areas of the frame that just make for better compositions. Our eyes are just kind of naturally drawn to these focal points, and to find these focal points, we've created a couple of rules. First, there's the center rule, which says that if you put your subject in the center of the frame, it becomes the most interesting part of your image. Here, I've drawn a couple of yellow lines, and where these lines intersect is the exact center of this canvas. This is a privileged place in the composition because our eyes are naturally drawn to it. However, the center rule is great, but it's also a little boring. It's a little vanilla, so we have a second composition rule called the rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds says that if you take your picture and divide it up into thirds horizontally and vertically, where those lines intersect are the most visually pleasing places for your subject. So here, I've drawn these blue lines to divide this canvas up into thirds, and this grid of nine squares provides a kind of blueprint for placing your subject in the frame. Here we have Migrant Mother, which is a rather famous photograph by Dorothea Lange from the Great Depression. Now if I cut my guides on, you'll see that this picture is a great example of the center rule and the rule of thirds. First of all, each of the three characters in the picture, the woman and her two boys, each occupy their own third of the photograph. They each get to have their own space within the frame. Second of all, notice that the mother's face is centered around the intersection of the upper third line and the center line, and her left eye is also on that center line, which has the effect of drawing our eyes towards her face and allowing us as viewers to connect with her. You know, we're almost able to make eye contact with her. Let's look at another example. This is Sleep and His Half-Brother Death an oil painting by John William Waterhouse from the late 1800s. If we turn on our guides, we can see that sleep occupies the bottom and left thirds, but the real subject of this piece is death. His face is built around the upper left intersection here, his eye is centered on the left third line, and he takes up much more space than sleep does. However, I bet your eyes were still drawn to sleep first. That's because even though he isn't placed ideally in the frame, he's made to stand out with our second principle of composition, contrast. Contrast is about differences, the differences between light and dark, and the differences between colors. There's a lot to cover here, and I'm going to put out another video covering all the ins and outs of color theory, but for now, let's just focus on the differences between light and dark. This is Nighthawks by Edward Hopper. It depicts a New York City diner late at night, and is a prime example of how contrast can be used to lead your viewer's eye. The world outside the diner is dark, while the interior is bright, drawing our eyes towards the figures inside. Likewise, if we go back to Sleep in His Half-Brother Death, the majority of this image is dark and shadowy, but Sleep is in bright sunlight, so he's the first thing that jumps out at us when we look at the painting. Contrast is a great tool to use in composing your images because its effect on the viewer is almost immediate. The moment they look at the picture, their eye will be drawn to the part of the image that has the greatest contrast with the rest of the composition. Planes of Focus 
The next tool we're going to talk about is what I call planes of focus. You will also hear it called foreground, middle ground, and background. I prefer to call it planes of focus because if you're a photographer, you will actually have to adjust your focus ring to change which of these planes is in focus, whether it's the foreground, the midground, or the background. So what are these planes? This one is best explained with an example. This is Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog by Caspar David Friedrich. Now, the foreground is the area of the image closest to the viewer. If we imagine that this canvas is a window, the foreground is the area right outside the window. Like if we were to stick our head out and look down, we'd see the foreground. So for this painting, that's the cliff and the man standing on it. The background is the area far off in the distance, the distant mountains and the sky. And the middle ground, or the midground, is the area that's too far away to be in the foreground, but not far enough away to be in the background. I know that's a little vague, but it's helpful to think of these planes as a gradient rather than three distinct areas. Some paintings, like this one, have a prominent foreground that's easy to distinguish, while with others, like most landscapes, the planes kind of fade into each other, like this. The last tool we're going to talk about today is lines and triangles. Like the rule of thirds and the center rule, this principle is all about where you place subjects in your frame and how they interact with each other to lead your viewer. Let's look at this painting by Italian Renaissance painter Titian. This scene depicts the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, which is a scene from Catholic doctrine where Mary's body was taken up to heaven. If we turn on our placement guides, we can see that this image follows the standard rule of thirds and the center rule, with Mary and God both placed on the vertical axis, and Mary's chest centered on the upper third. However, I'd now like to draw your attention to the bottom of the frame, where these two apostles are standing. Notice that they are dressed in red, while the apostles around them are dressed in green, and they are reaching heavenward towards Mary. The red of their robes matches the red of Mary's dress and the red of God's cloak. So by positioning these subjects in this way, Titian has created a triangle pointing upwards. This has the effect of leading the viewer's gaze from the apostles on the ground through Mary towards God. Similarly, looking back at Nighthawks, the perspective lines on the diner converge far off to the left, which has the effect of pushing our eyes towards the lighted area on the right. Both of these techniques, using compositional triangles and lines, are subtle yet effective ways you can lead your viewer through the experience of viewing your image. Okay, so now that I've given you a set of tools you can use to compose your image, I want to give you an extra tip on how to use those tools to create the most effective compositions you possibly can. It's one thing to know what these tools are and how to use them. It's another thing entirely to use them effectively to make something great. For example, anyone can figure out how to use a hammer, but not everyone can build a house. Likewise, just about anybody can figure out how the rule of thirds works, but not everybody can snap migrant mother. So what's the secret? How do we use these tools effectively? Say something. Whether you're painting, or taking photographs, or shooting a short film, don't just think about what your subject is. Think about what you're trying to say about it. All of the images we've looked at today are saying something about their subjects, and more importantly, they're inviting their viewers into the conversation. Viewers can ponder what the man on the cliffs is thinking. Will he jump, or is he just enjoying the view? What are the people in the diner thinking about? Will this mother be able to feed her children? Great images aren't just pictures. They're statements that invite us to think about their subjects in a new light because they present their subjects from a perspective we've never seen before. Be intentional and tell a story, then invite your viewer into that story. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out my video on color theory when it drops in the coming weeks, as well as the rest of the videos in my Art Fundamentals series. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time when we make something new.